Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a quartic equation x to the fourth power plus 4x minus 1 equals 0. Alright, so I kind of searched for a solution of this, like if I could see it on YouTube, but I haven't seen one. I don't know if there's an, any video that solves this problem. Please let me know if you see one. Uh, so this might be the first time. Anyway, so this is a polynomial equation and Obviously, there's a formula that you can use, but that's pretty complicated. So at this point, pause the video and then try the problem yourself first. And then I'm going to get into the solution. Okay, let's get started. Now, we have a quartic, but it's missing some of the terms. We don't have an x cubed. We don't have an x squared. That's a good thing. First, I'm going to show you two different solutions here. And the first one is going to be like this. So I'm going to take this quartic. And I'm going to write it as a product of two polynomials, one of which is x squared plus ax plus b. The other one is going to be x squared plus cx plus d. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and distribute on the right hand side and then set the coefficients equal to each other, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to get some interesting results from here. Okay. so. If you distribute the x to the fourth term, we're going to get, so they're going to match up. That's good. To make it a little easier, let's go ahead and go by x powers. Um, we get an x cubed. So that's going to be like ax cubed plus cx cubed. So it's going to be a plus cx cubed. And then the x squared term is going to be, we'll get bx squared and dx squared and acx squared. So if you put it all together, it's going to look like ac plus b plus d times x squared. And then we're going to get an x term, which is going to be like ax times d and cx times b. So it's going to be ad plus bc times x. And then finally, our constant is going to be bd. Okay? So these two polynomials are going to equal each other for every x, meaning that we can kind of determine the coefficients here. So from here, a plus c, there's no x cubed term, so a plus c is going to be 0. There's no x squared, so this is also going to be 0. The coefficient of x is 4, so this is going to equal 4. And our constant is going to be negative 1. And we are looking for integer a, b, c, d here, so hopefully we're going to find some. Or maybe they're not integers, we don't know yet, right? But the product bd equals negative 1 tells me that it can be plus minus 1. But we do not know if they are integers so we can't really assume that anyways so let's go ahead and write this down we have a plus z equal to zero a c plus b plus d equal to zero a d plus b c equals four and b d equals negative one okay all right so that's kind of like a system of equations and there are four variables so we should be able to solve this right i mean it should not be too hard okay so from here, you can just go ahead and actually eliminate C here. How we can do that is, well, we can just go ahead and replace the C with negative A, right? From here, oopsies, C is equal to negative A. So if you go ahead and plug in negative A, B plus T is going to equal A squared from here. If you replace C with negative A, you're going to get AD minus AB being equal to 4. And from here, actually, I can just go ahead and plot the A. That's going to give me A times the quantity, D minus B is equal to 4. And from here, I can actually isolate D minus B because I have B minus B plus D. And if I can get the D minus B from here, that's going to be helpful. So D minus B is going to equal 4 over A. And as you know, B D is equal to negative 1. So this is really cool because I got an equation basically on B and D, like three different equations. One of them is numerical and the other one depends on A. So we should be able to work with this, three variables and three equations. Okay? Now, from here, we can actually go ahead and write D in terms of A because, and B in terms of A, because if you add these two equations up, okay, let's go ahead and write it down here. B plus D is A squared d minus b is 4 over a. We're just going to go ahead and add them up. 
the b is going to cancel out we get 2d is equal to a squared plus 4 over a and then from here we can actually go ahead and divide both sides by 2 and we'll get d in terms of a which is going to be a squared over 2 plus 2 over a so this gives us the value of d in terms of a which is nice and then let's go ahead and find the b and to find b you can actually go ahead and subtract these equations side by side that's going to be easier somewhat and from here you're going to find that b is equal to a squared oopsies a squared over 2 minus 2 over a so they're going to be like kind of conjugates okay all right awesome b and d are given like this and we also know that b times d is equal to negative 1 so that's also cool right so what we can do is we can actually go ahead and multiply these two quantities in terms of a and then set it equal to negative 1 and then solve for a from there let's go ahead and do that a squared over 2 plus 2 over a multiplied by a squared over 2 minus 2 over a is equal to negative 1 this is difference of two squares so we're going to be getting a to the fourth power divided by 4 minus 4 over a squared is equal to negative 1 if you make a common denominator here multiply by a squared and multiply by 4 you're going to get the following and if you cross multiply you're going to be getting a really nice equation well not super nice but we'll figure it out right we're going to find a way to solve it well this kind of looks like a six degree equation but we can actually simplify it because these are even powers so we can go ahead and write it like this first a to the sixth power plus 4a squared minus 16 is equal to zero so let's go ahead and call a squared u then we're gonna get u cubed plus 4u minus 16 is equal to zero now using the rational root theorem by checking divisors of 16 we actually find out that u equals 2 is a solution okay and if you divide this polynomial by u minus 2 you're going to find the other solutions but the other roots are complex so you don't really need to worry about them because we're interested in real solutions here so u equals 2 meaning that a squared is equal to 2 which means a is equal to plus minus root 2 great so we found the value of a and a lot of things depend on a first of all you know that c is the opposite of a right so for example if we take a is equal to root 2 which is one of the possibilities then from here we get that c is equal to negative root 2 because they're opposites right and then from here we get d is equal to now if you remember that we had b and d in terms of a so if a equals 2 for example d is going to be 2 squared divided by 2 plus 2 over 2 right and from here we're actually going to get the i'm sorry the, if we take a equals root 2 root 2 squared is 2 2, two divided by 2 equals 1 2 divided by root 2 is root 2 so it's going to be root 2 plus 1 in other words okay to keep a long story short d is going to be 1 plus root 2 from here right okay and then uh, b is going to be 1 minus root 2 we know that they are conjugate so they're going to look like this okay so we basically found the a b c d values right by taking a equals root 2 obviously by taking a equals negative root 2 you're going to be getting the other solutions which basically they're just going to be switched around right so our polynomial eventually is going to look like this after factoring it's going to look like this we're going to get x squared plus root 2x plus 1 minus root 2 multiplied by x squared minus root 2x plus 1 plus root 2 and by setting each factor equal to 0 because they these are quadratics we're going to be able to find actually uh, all the solutions okay and how do you find the solutions from here basically you can just go ahead and um, use the quadratic formula and you'll get the solutions so let's go ahead and do that x equals from here we're going to be getting negative b plus minus the square root of b squared which is going to be 2 in this case minus 4ac that's going to be 4 times this quantity okay divided by 2a which is 2 
And if you simplify this a little bit, you're going to notice that it's going to be x equals negative root 2 plus minus 4 root 2, the square root of that, minus 2, divided by 2. And the other one is basically going to give us, because this is a quartic, this is going to be, this is going to have four solutions here. And the other solutions are going to be coming from this, the other equation, which is negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Okay? And if you go ahead and simplify that, we're going to get something similar. And we're going to obtain all the other solutions. Okay? All right. And when you distribute this, this is basically going to be negative 4 root 2 minus 2 and divide by 2. So obviously, these roots are going to be complex because this is a negative quantity. Square root of that is not going to be real, so on and so forth. So we're not really... I mean, we could just take them as uh, complex solutions, but that's pretty much it. Okay, that was our first method. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our second method, which is actually actually pretty interesting. Uh, I find it quite interesting. Obviously, the first one is like a brute force method, but second one is actually a really cool way to approach the problem. Okay, so our original problem is x to the fourth plus 4x minus 1. So I'm going to be adding and subtracting some terms to this to make it factorable. And how can I make most of these things factorable? Uh, you've probably seen similar problems like, okay, x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1 is factorable because you can complete the square and turn that into a difference of two squares. Or if you have something like x to the fourth plus 4, again, so with fourth powers, if, especially if there is a coefficient of 4 in there as well, uh, difference of two squares works really nicely. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this into x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1, which is x squared plus 1 quantity squared, right? But then I kind of need to arrange the other terms. And the other terms are going to be like this. Okay, so I have a 4x, right? Let's see what I added and what I need to subtract. So I added a 2x squared plus 1. So I need to subtract those, right? And then write everything else. So let's see what this looks like. Then I'm going to be getting from here x squared plus 1 quantity squared. So hopefully I'm also going to be getting a perfect square from here. This is going to be minus 2x squared. Okay. Plus 4x. minus 2, right? Okay. So what I did was I added 2x squared plus 1 and I subtracted it and then I just added these two terms. So everything looks good, right? Okay. Now, this expression, if you kind of factor it out, you're going to notice that this is actually factorable. We can take out a 2 there. The negative 2 gives us x squared minus 2x plus 1. And yay, this is factorable. Nice. Okay. So this is going to turn into x squared plus 1 squared minus 2 times the quantity x minus 1 squared. Okay. Awesome. So we were able to write it this way, but how is this factorable from this point on? It's a difference of two squares, but 2 is not a perfect square, but that could be taken care of. So we're going to be writing this expression as this. Root 2 multiplied by x minus 1, and that quantity is squared. There you go. Now we got a difference of two squares. We can just go ahead and factor it. A plus B. Okay. Like this. And then A minus B. All right. If you arrange these terms a little bit, you're basically going to be getting the exact same solutions. So it's going to look like X squared plus root 2 X plus 1 minus root 2 multiply by x squared minus root 2x plus 1 plus root 2. So these are going to be the factors of x to the fourth plus 4x minus 1. Pretty interesting, right? Well, thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. We'll continue with more videos, this type of questions and geometry puzzles. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.